Okay, so statistics have shown that women account for only 16% of all undergraduate computer science majors, but one college in particular apparently knows how to change that. Joining us to discuss this is Oliver Staley uh, from Quartz. How's it going, Oliver? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's great to get you on today. Um, so give us a, a quick rundown here on Harvey Mudd College and where it stands when it comes to female computer science graduates. So, yeah, as you mentioned, they've, they've sort of unlocked the secret of how to keep women in computer science and graduate them. And for the first time this year, they had more women than men. Uh, graduate graduate with majors in computer science. 55% of their computer science majors were women. Um, if you factor in joint majors, it's slightly less, something like 49%, but still, it's, it's a really significant number. And as, as you mentioned, nationally, the number is around 16%, and that number hasn't really changed. It's actually come down a little. It peaked a little bit higher at one point. Um, so yeah, Harvey Mudd is doing a really good job at this. And They've done it um, by sort of really working hard at it. it. It didn't happen by accident. They made it a priority, and they they worked at um, encouraging, first of all, all undergraduates are required to take a computer science course. Uh, I don't know if you don't know, Harvey Mudd is uh, entirely uh, students in science and engineering, so it's not unusual for them to be required to take this course. So all women are initially exposed to computer science, and they um, uh, they separate the uh, freshmen into three tracks. So there is an opportunity for women who have absolutely no experience, and men as well, who have no experience in computer science to, to, to take a sort of introductory course. And that's what they found is that's really helpful because it sort of reduces the, the intimidation factor. So the, the women in it and men are not as, um, they're not sort of thrown in, in the deep end with, with people who have been studying this stuff for years. And so... Uh, they can sort of ease into it, and they um, they change the programming language. So they don't use Java; they use Python, which I'm told is an easier language. Uh, and they change the uh, they made the the course more team based and more participatory and more project based to uh, make it more engaging to people. And they um, they did something that was interesting, which is they they sort of encouraged the know-it-alls in class, and which in some cases were men, to keep their hands down, not to take up all the airtime in class talking and showing off. They they don't want to discourage people from from having ideas, but they asked those the, the men doing that to do it offline in office hours, so women could have sort of more opportunity to talk, and and again wouldn't feel shut down. Um, and that has slowly had an impact uh, over the years. Um, uh, they've also, it's a university, a college that has a lot of women uh, professors. Uh, the um, president is a woman. Uh, you just saw a picture of her there, I think. Um, and uh, she has been really instrumental in driving this forward. It really seems like, I mean, we talked a lot on this show, you know, in the technology space about, you know, things like inclusion just as as you know, a way of making the environment less, I, I don't know, know if the right word is hostile, but more, you know, more compatible with all sorts, you know, all people from all walks of life instead of just being targeted at one particular demographic. And then, you know, the whole idea behind inclusion is like you, you almost feel shut down in that scenario if that doesn't necessarily gel with your background. Really seems like that's uh, something that they've got going here. That works in the university level. Uh, is there a risk for graduates moving on from uh, from this kind of environment out into the workplace where it might not well, be as hospitable? Yeah, I know. I think I think there's there's always that risk when anyone goes from sort of a, a, a comfortable environment until the real world. But I, I don't know that that would be different from going from a school like Harvey Mudd than from any other small liberal arts college sure. where you're thrown into the deep end of, of a work of the work world. One thing um, the president told me is that their women tend to do, tend to find jobs in larger employers like the Googles and Facebooks versus startups because those are more predictable work environments where there might be more kind of scaffolding to support women in, in their careers uh, versus the kind of rough and tumble, um, eat your own environment of, of a startup. Hmm. Um, Oliver, quick quick question here. So sure. it sounds as if the the experiment is basically about encouraging self confidence. It's it's giving people the ability to and the environment, the safe environment for them to say, hey, you know what? I actually know this. I, I I'm not the bottom of my of my class. I'm not I'm not that the, the the crippled kid who can't understand any of the concepts that are being explained. 
but do we eventually in this experiment get past that point? Do we get to a point sure, where we yeah, don't yeah. have to encourage self-confidence? It just comes with the territory. Right. So, you know, basically what it is, is it's, I think you're not wrong, but I would phrase it slightly differently in that it's about reducing attrition. You know, basically the problem has been that uh, women just uh, uh, find reasons to drop out of computer science. Um, they either feel pressured or uncomfortable or they just find other things they like better. And what they try to do is encourage a kind of enthusiasm and love of the subject so that the women who actually are, want, are, are really suited for it stay in it versus sort of find, fall out. And so, what? yeah, so after that first semester, um, the, they, uh, they become sort of, the, the, the three tracks, uh, I guess, start f funneling into one. And by the time they decide to become computer science majors, there's no difference in the tracks. And, and they're just, you know, they're, they're in the deep end with, with, with men and everyone else. They're, and so, yeah, they're, and also one of the things um, the school encourages is uh, after the freshman year for women to take internships um, and, and, or, or research opportunities to really get a, a, a sort of exposure to the world of computer science. So the idea here is that. Um, they take the training wheels off pretty quickly, and they're just, you know, they're, they're in, the, in the mix with everyone else, but it's that initial kind of introductory process that can be so intimidating and, uh, and historically has left a lot of women feeling like this was not for them. Okay, I, I'm, I'm absolutely with that. I understand that. I've, I've done teaching, so I understand how important that, that beginning part is because you can quickly either entice a student or turn a student off entirely from a field. But playing devil's advocate, there are going to be members of our audience who are going to say, wait a minute, why, why would we do this? I mean, the men in the class are being exposed to the same know-it-alls. The men in the class get the same environment. So are, are we creating a false environment, one that's not going to exist outside of the classroom, one that won't exist in a larger university? Is this experiment repeatable? Well, yeah, we don't know. I mean, I, I, what, what we do know is that a lot of colleges are, are, are want to learn from Harvey Mudd, and they're, they've created a, an initiative um, with, I think there's now 16 colleges in it, some very big universities like Arizona State and, and some smaller ones um, who are, are trying to borrow from this model and encourage women. I, and I there may be another way to do it, but nothing else, else has really proven to work. So why not try this? Um, you know, it's it's a little hard to track the career. It's a little early to track the career progress of all the women who have gone through this, but they are getting jobs. They're staying in those jobs so far, and, and they seem to be uh, flourishing their careers. Um, so it does seem to be working. Um, I, I guess is the argument that they're somehow stunted by this experience? I mean, maybe some are, but... You know, I, it's, uh, I think uh, the world might be better off with slightly stunted computer scientists than no computer scientists who are women. Yeah, that's true. And another another kind of interesting fact about taking this and applying it onward is that Harvey Mudd College is actually p relatively small. It's like 800 students uh, in total. And you said that they're working to kind of scale this out. The uh, Some of the other kind of potential universities that are working on this, are they much larger? Or does yeah, is this so the like, kind of format that only works for a smaller uh, place? Oh, I, you know, I, I think it, it helps that it is at a smaller place. Sure. Um, but Arizona State is, is, is an example of it's one of the biggest universities in, in, in the in the country, and, and they are part of this initiative. Um, whether to what I have, I, they're not a school I've talked to about this, so I don't know how they're implementing it, but I do know that they're part of the initiative. It, it's, you know, um, a lot of universities have schools of engineering. So you have a, you could have a small college within a big university and it, and it might be easier to, to replicate. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the challenges here though is, is again, like Harvey Mudd, computer science is mandatory for every freshman at Harvey Mudd. So you can't get out of it. And so, um, you, so they, they're able to, they have sort of a, a captive audience, and since they can sort of inculcate them in uh, um, a kind of nurturing and, 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 and uh, encouraging computer science environment, they're able to, to retain them. It, it, at another school where that's not the case, where there isn't a mandatory computer science uh, class, women may just choose not to sign up and they'll take something else. So I, I think, frankly, one of the keys to Harvey Mudd's success is that mandatory component. Every Since every woman is taking computer science, they have an opportunity to reach every woman in the college. Sure. Oliver, what's success here? If, if you start looking at the program in two, three years, and maybe it expands, 
Is it just having a higher retention rate of women in computer science? Is it increasing the number of women in the workforce in IT? What, what would you consider to be sort of the, the level at which we could say, yes, this works? Well, I, I think it's, it's how, when we start seeing women reaching leadership positions in, in, the, in tech, Frankly, you know, when we, when startups are, are, are run and funded by women, when the big companies are run by women, um, or at least you know a fairly representative amount of women. I don't, I don't think a, a world of 100% women CEOs is any better than a woman of 100% male CEOs. But I think we, the world would be a lot better off if we saw equal representation at the highest levels, and we started seeing more women uh, persisting in their careers. I, you know, I think a, a big concern is what happens when women reach sort of uh, their, their late 20s, early 30s, and they have, you know, are they able to con have a family and stay in their careers? Um, that's not just a tech challenge. It's a, a challenge for all industry. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, what's one of the reasons we don't see a lot of women CEOs is because there's been a lot, they aren't able to maintain their careers through their family rearing ages. Right.